Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with the 29th week of WeeklyPokerHand.com, where today I'm going to be going over one of our viewers' hand histories. This is not one of my own. This is from a mid-stake online tournament. So we'll go ahead and get right into the action. Here you raise it up with jacks, which is obviously standard. And you get a call, a bunch of calls. They check to you, you bet about eh, three-fifths pot, which I think is perfectly fine. Especially multi-way. Whenever you have something like a set and a multi-way pot, pretty much no matter what the board is, you should generally throw out a bet because someone's not going to believe you. And you know, obviously that's a very good thing. You get min-raised by the guy directly behind you. And when this guy min-raises, you need to try to define a range for him. And I think in general, when you see guys min-raise, they're going to show up with something like top pair, which is very tough for him to have because you have two jacks. Or he's going to have a set, which is certainly likely. Or he's going to have an overpair of some sort, which um, you know you crush, but probably isn't likely again because he didn't re-raise preflop. Or he's going to have one of the underpair type hands, like uh, tens or nines, but again, he didn't re-raise the preflop, so we can sort of discount those. So what does that leave? That leaves most likely um, either a set or a jack. I think those are going to be what we're going to be looking at a lot of the time here. He could occasionally have 10-9 for the draw, but I think a lot of players would either flat with the draw here or raise larger to try to get fold equity, so I would generally discount that. And you like to re-raise. And I actually don't like this play, and the reason I don't like this play is because if your opponent has a jack and you re-raise here, he's probably going to fold. Obviously, it's very tough for him to have a jack, like I said, because there's only one left. However, you have to remember it's equally difficult for him to have a set because you can only have a few combinations of each of those. So this is an interesting spot where he's representing a very, very tight range by raising the flop, but even though that range is very tight, I think that still is pretty much his range. Um, I, I don't really think too many people are going to be min-raising the flop here with, like, total air. It's just not going to happen. He could have one of the draws, like um, Queen-9 maybe, but even then, you don't want to blow him off of that. You want him to continue in the hand, and you want him to get it in drawing thin. So right here, you re-raise him back. And I think if you do this, your opponent's only going to continue with a set or some random two-pair, like um, exactly Jack-8, which again is pretty tough, or uh, maybe Ace-Jack. But besides that, I think your opponent's going to fold everything. And even though your opponent's range is very small, I think right here you really want to keep him in, so I would probably go ahead and flat call. And also, if he does happen to have one of those bluffs like Jack-9, you really want to keep him in, and you don't want to blow him off here. Your opponent calls, though, interestingly enough. Um, when he calls, I would expect most players to shove it all in here with a set, so I would, again, start to discount a set. So when he calls, it's looking to me exactly like that Jack hand, or maybe a slow-played set, or maybe... 10-9, but I don't think too many people are min-raising 10-9. This is a cool hand because... The way the hand's played out drastically has reduced our opponent's range. And obviously we have the nuts, so that's okay, but in general it's tough for your opponent to have any of those specific hands we've named. So it's almost like, what can he have? Um, this is just one of, those pot, one of those spots where even though there are very few combinations of hands he can have, he has to have one of those. So again, I think you're probably looking at a set or a top pair here. But probably not top pair because you raise them off of it. So the only hands that really make sense here are a set or the draw. But again, the draw doesn't make sense. So I guess the only thing that really makes sense is a set. Um, so if he has a set, you want to pile the money in. However, this is a pretty bad turn for a set because 10-9 gets there, and you could certainly have 10-9. So I would probably go for a check here, but I'm not really looking to check fold. I'm more so looking to check and deuce a bet from him. You check, your opponent bets 3,500, and you like to call. When your opponent bets here, I mean, he's betting for value, I imagine, or as a bluff, whatever, with queen nine, but I think that's pretty optimistic. So I would, um, I'd probably go all in here just to try to go ahead and get it all in with the sets. I don't think anyone's folding a set of twos or eights here. I think that'd be pretty tough. But yeah, I'm not really looking to fold here, and I think the member that sent this in thought in this point that this player's range was exactly 10-9, because... Why else would anyone bet here at 10-9? But I, I have to disagree. I think you're going to be looking at a lot of sets here, um, even though they're not that likely. River's a blank. You check. Guy bets enough to put you all in, and you fold. No, actually, you call. 
Um, and uh, Nuts Baby does show up with a set. And this is a cool spot because it doesn't come up where, very often where your opponent's range is effectively no hands. <laughs> and right here, that was the case. But even if their range is very, very, very tiny, there are still hands in that range. And, you know, he just happens to have one of them. And I think you were looking squarely at, like, Ace-Jack or a set or Jack-8. And you obviously have that range crushed. And you really should not be too scared of the 7 here because no one is going to be... Or no, I'm not going to say no one, but very few people are going to be min-raising the flop with a straight draw. Most people know they want to get fold equity. And whenever you min-raise the flop with a straight draw, you're not giving yourself any fold equity. So, yeah, pretty cool hand. I'm going to turn this hand around and look at it from your opponent's point of view in part two of this episode, and I think that's going to also be pretty cool because your flop three bet certainly narrows your range down to about nothing as well. So, pretty cool hand where both players say they have the nuts, but obviously only one of them does. So, check out part two. And if uh, you guys want to know why I really don't like the flop re-raise, I definitely suggest you check out my book, Secrets of Professional Tournament Poker. I, I definitely talk about keeping your opponent in with by disguising your hand strength and keeping your hand range weak. And I think right here you really did tip your opponent off the, to the fact that you had a monster. And that's not really what you want to do. So check that out. And if you guys have any questions or comments, or if you want me to review one of your hands, please feel free to let me know. This has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thanks for watching.